What's up guys and girls? So if you watched my stick welding shootout, you probably saw that I had some interesting results with 7014 rods. And if you didn't see the video, I'll put a link in the description. Go and watch it. It's worth it. So I thought, what better thing to do at, I don't know, 1, 2 a.m. than try the test over at higher amperages and see if the results are different. I have no idea what to expect, but that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's get into it. So our setup is pretty much the same as it was in the shootout video. Prep plates. I didn't grind up here because, well, I'm not going to be welding up there. I bumped the amperage up from like 115, 120 amps, and I'm going to run this rod at 130, which is above what I ran the 7018 pass at, in the hopes to see what the results are, if they're different or they're the same. I mean, this is definitely going to prove, uh, I guess a proof's in the pudding would be a way to say it. So I'm going to tack this up and then weld it and pretty much cut it in half and etch it. And you know what, since I have a 6010 here, 130 amps should be enough to tack this. Yeah, that tack was a little bit hot to say the least. An old welder's trick was to dip 6010 in water, crank your welder if you had a really big stick welder up to about, I don't know, 250 amps, and then you could literally use a 6010 to cut a plate in half. I'll have to shoot a video where I try that. I've never actually done it. I've heard it works from reliable sources. So the first pass went in there, looks good. No real complaints other than the flux was kind of a bear to get out of there. Looks, yeah, looked like there was a hint of undercut, but I think that's just slag. Yeah, that's just slag in there by the look of it. So yeah, that went pretty good. I did experience a little bit of arc blow right in here, and I just slowed my travel speed down, fed a little bit more rod. But I was running this at 130 amps, so that's beyond what I would normally run this rod at, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. So I will drop it down to 120 and see what happens. In the shootout video, I honestly didn't really feel like the bead was run cold. It's just that the penetration of it was a little bit odd. So being 130 amps, I mean, it should have good penetration. There's no question that was run hot. So let me do this uh, second pass on here, and then we'll cut it and etch it up. So that ran about perfect at 120 amps. I mean, real smooth. I like the way that that ran. I mean, you can tell just by, if you look at that flux, how completely even everything looks, like the dust and the black line and the coating. I mean, perfect. I don't think it really is gonna get any better than that. So let me clean this off and Well, here we go. The results are in, and they're interesting. So grab yourself some popcorn and a beer. It's going to be over quick, but let's see what we can find. So pass one is on the right, ran at 130 amps. Now, it's better than obviously pass two, and it is better than in the previous testing in the rod shootout video, 
but it's not really anything to write home about. Now, I find it kind of odd that it melted into the upright plate more than the bottom. I mean, everything's centered at 45 degrees, so that's good, but there's very little fusion in the bottom plate. There is some fusion in the root. That little dot you see there on pass one isn't really anything to be concerned about. That's just because the plate was not perfectly flat. Although I do find it odd that this particular rod tends to bridge over that rather than consume it like you saw with the other rods in the previous video. Now pass two is a different story. So I dropped the amperage on that to 120, so 10 less amps. The plate was cooled off. It has about the same penetration realistically on the sides. The bead profile's flatter, which is kind of interesting. I would have thought the hotter pass would be flatter. And that root in there is not looking too good. And it just seems to have a weird tendency just to bridge over it. At first I thought, well, maybe that's just gas escaping, but none of the other rods really had this issue in the previous video, so I think it's just the nature of this rod. It doesn't really like to penetrate in the root very much. I mean, you can see at 120 amps, it kind of has like a funnel shape versus the 130 is more round. So this rod, if you're running it as a root pass, you definitely want to be up there in amperage, which honestly, it seems to run a little bit harsher at 130 than 120, but you get better penetration. There's no doubt about that. And it's kind of interesting to me because 7018 doesn't really exhibit this kind of penetration profile on thicker plate. And I'll put a picture up now and we'll look at both of them together. So you can see that 7018 doesn't exhibit that weird like root pin dot where it just bridges over despite penetrating beyond that. So that's kind of odd. That's something I've only seen, to be honest, with 7014 so far in my testing. But the penetration on the upright plate definitely is better with 7014 and 7018, but then the 7018's lower plate penetration is a little bit better, and that all could be just me due to rod angle, so I don't put too much weight into that. I don't know, you know, is 7014 an all right rod? Yeah, I would say it is, but I'll tell you what, if you don't run enough amperage on it, you're definitely going to have root fusion issues. You know, if you were to run that at 110 amps, it'd probably be even worse. But, I mean, 130 amps is borderline about the most it seemed to want to really run at. Had I boosted it more, I probably would have got more arc flow and the bead would have been rougher. So, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Which one do you like the looks of better? And keep in mind, too, that the 7014, the actual root of the plates, if you were to draw intersecting lines on that picture is pretty much right where that pin dot is on the second pass, so the left one. And 7018 is pretty much the same thing. Like actual root fusion isn't really that much better. It's the same with 7018. It's definitely no 6010, that's for sure. So that was kind of interesting. 130 amps did make the overall weld penetration looked better. The bead still is kind of got a weird appearance to it. In the 7014 dedicated video, it kind of did too. And I don't know, I'm not a fan of the way that looks. Like over here I saw, yeah, you can see it. Like look at the, it's like divots in there. You know, like, and that isn't from my hammer or anything. That's just the way that the weld solidifies. And it does have a very dense slag, so maybe it just stays molten long enough that the weight of the slag on top causes that. It actually seems to be more present at 120 amps than 130. I don't know, just odd bead appearance. Penetration profile's odd to me, and honestly, you know, I run 7018 for most everything, and I don't really have any reason to use 7014. You know, maybe if you got an AC buzz box and 7018 just won't run well and you want to run 
some stronger welds. Yeah, use 7014 in that case. You know, definitely not knock in that situation. But beyond that, once you get to use 7018, I don't think you're going to be going back to 7014. Although I will say this, 7014 is very easy to restrike the rods. 7018, not so much. But yeah, there you have it. I don't know. I learned something. Run 7014 at higher amperage than 7018. I learned that. That's a definite. Otherwise, you're going to have very poor penetration. But beyond that, if you got any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, you know where to leave them. Till next time, guys. Thanks for sticking around.